there guys, at PC guy here, and with the recent launch of Diablo, uh, the classic Diablo on GOG, I kind of remember that I have never shown Diablo 3 to you guys. Now, this is Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls, the expansion. Uh, it's been a, it's a game that's been around for several years now. Uh, truth be told, there are not a whole lot of content updates for it, so it's mostly a, a stable, finished game. Uh, it has had several uh, past versions, several iterations of the game that have changed a lot over the game. Uh, I will just uh, give you a small overview of the game and uh, of the play, uh, how it plays, the gameplay, and uh, you know, let you guys see the game and such. Now, uh, it's a game from Blizzard. Uh, as per usual, you can uh, download them on uh, Battle.net. Uh, I've covered this in previous uh, games that I have shown you guys. Um, the game itself, uh, it's a loot uh, dungeon crawler RPG, so to speak. Uh, if you're not familiar with Diablo, uh, it's one of the staples of uh, PC gaming for the past many years. Um, I will show you, you know, the game itself as it goes. For now, let's see the classes available. You have uh, several character slots, as you can see. Uh, and you have, at the moment, uh, sev uh, seven, I believe, classes available. Yes, you can customize them a little bit, male, female, uh, not much more than that. You have the Barbarian, which is a tanky, melee uh, character, let's say. Uh, you have Crusader, which is uh, mostly tank. Uh, melee option as well, even though there are some range builds that you can have, but it's more focused on the tankiness uh, than uh, the Barbarian, if you compare the two. Uh, the Demon Hunter is a very, very frail and squishy uh, build, focused on range attacks, traps, crossbow stuff. Uh, it's the Archer archetype, let's say. There are some pets involved, but they're not really the main focus of the class as well. Monk is a support-ish uh, melee damage character as well. It has a lot of support options as well as the damage options that um, you can expect in every character in Diablo. Necromancer, uh, as you can expect, a lot of skeleton zombie pets and such, um, as well as some uh, blood draining and uh, that sort of thing. Um, Witch Doctor, it is uh, the traditional voodoo uh, character, let's call it. Uh, a lot of poison, a lot of uh, voodoo stuff, uh, frogs, bats, uh, little animals like that, as well as uh, zombie dogs, uh, zombie abominations, the spirit uh, uh, stuff, that kind of thing, as you can expect. It's also mostly a frail-ish character, focused on ranged attacks and letting the pets do the brunt of the tanking. Wizard, well, what is there to say? It's a ranged class. Uh, with tons of different uh, ranged spells, tornadoes, lightning, fire, ice, uh, you name it. It's also not very sturdy. Uh, it's kind of a frail character that you have to uh, be kind of aware of the damage that you are going to be taking. Uh, when you are creating a character, you have a chance to select hardcore hero. That means that your hero will die, and it dies and stays dead for good. So it's uh, kind of an extreme uh, setting that you can enable if you like the challenge. Seasonal hero. Is a hero that is specific for the season. Diablo has many seasons. Uh, it has. It is now on season. Uh, I'm not even sure, but uh, it's surely past the 16 or 17 seasons right now. Each season has specific rewards for completing a set of objectives, uh, which usually involve getting to high uh, difficulties of the game. Uh, when the season ends, your character is not deleted. It is simply reverted back to a normal character that is not seasonal, and um, then it, all the stuff that you got, items, uh, experience, it gets shared with all the non-seasonal characters that you have. Then the new season starts, and you have to create a new seasonal character if you want to compete in that season. So uh, that is how the season system works, and uh, its rewards are usually things like pets, banners, uh, and that sort of thing. Now for the game mode itself, uh, you can click here on game settings to see, uh, campaign is the story mode, the storyline, uh, what you can expect from a, a single player game, let's call it. Uh, adventure, uh, it is a specific type which I will let you see, it's actually where I will show you the, the playthrough. It is, uh, has bounties available which are specific objectives in specific areas that will give you a reward, as well as Nephilim Rifts which are basically an uh, endless mode of, that lets you uh, scale up the difficulty higher and higher and higher uh, on a time trial basis. Challenge Rifts are 
the uh, it's difficult to explain but basically uh when you run a, a, a nephilim rift on any other difficulty the system kind of records it and uh, places it on, on a leaderboard that leaderboard will then be every week i believe one specific run will be selected and you will be placed controlling a character similar to the original character that did that uh, rift and you will have to beat their time you beat their time you get a little boxy with uh uh yeah stuff uh currency uh crafting items uh, you name it uh here the difficulty you can change the difficulty uh, through quite an array of different difficulties ranging from normal hard expert master torment all the way until torment um 13 so there is a total of uh, 15 or 16 different different difficulties which if each difficulty as you can see uh your gold and XP increases, the chance of uh, great items, legendary items increases, and uh, obviously the game will be a lot, lot more difficult. What are these legendary items? I'm gonna ch I'm gonna jump in game and I'm gonna let you see uh, what that's all about. I'm gonna drop the difficulty uh, because I have not played in a long, long time and I am not super familiar with, with whatever skills my character has right now and I have really not played it in like two years so I'm gonna just make it nice and smooth so you guys can see the gameplay. Diablo can be played alone obviously or with up to four people. There is no um, mode supported for more than four people. Uh, well, I'll just cast a little nice Pudang a tornado right there. But in any case, um, you level from 1 to 60 or 70 if you have the expansion. The Necromancer is part of the expansion, so uh, you need to get it if you want uh, to play a Necromancer. Uh, sorry, there is a Necromancer pack and there is an expansion. They are separate things. Uh, the normal game has four acts. One more act in the expansion, storyline-wise. Story uh, and the normal game goes up to 60 and the expansion up to 70. When you reach level 70, you get Paragon levels, which means that you keep getting XP and you keep getting levels. And uh, they let you get some status boosts that, um, like life, armor, resist, life regeneration, resource cost reduction. Well, you see, there's a whole list of them. Uh, itemization wise, uh, you will get a lot, lot of uh, items from the monsters. Um, you have the uh, normal blue, yellow items that are like hair and common, the other, yada, the other. Then you have the really interesting ones, which are the set items that actually modify your skills, as you can see. There is a number of sets for each uh, class, as well as legendary items that increase that have specific effects. And uh, for example here, pets deal increased damage. This one here, 26% of damage is uh, redirected to your zombie dogs. So with specific items, you can boost specific skills and customize your build in a lot of ways that would otherwise not be possible. And that is how you basically uh, create your own builds and uh, be original in Diablo. Now, the bounties that I earlier mentioned, they, as you can see, you open the map pressing M and you can see them that each act uh, will have bounties. You basically go, you have this clear forward barrack, so it's a little area inside that uh, little zone that you'll have to clear of all monsters to get that bounty completed. Here it's simply clearing a hair monster, uh, here it's killing a boss, So as you, and when you get all five done, you get an extra boss, uh, a boxy, as you can see, that contains gold, crafting items, and potentially legendaries and uh, other things as well. It also has a small gambling, not real life ga money gambling, but you collect blood shards as you play and uh, you can trade them in for unknown items. You want to gamble on a one handed weapon? Let's buy a few. Look, I got a legendary and a, um, you know, uncommon hair, I think, weapon there. So, uh, yeah, it lets you gamble on pieces that you specifically want. If you want a very specific legendary for your build, like this head, you just go there and you spend your shards on heads, increasing your chance of actually uh, getting what you want. Now, there are a lot of gameplay nuances and all. There are uh, gems that you can combine and socket in your armor, as you can see there, 22% life. Uh, there is reforging, which you can help uh, customize uh, a piece that you have that is good but one of the stats is not good for you and you can change that stat. Now uh, I'll actually do one Nephilim rift so you guys can see what it's all about. Now these rifts are not timed and they do not require 
anything to complete just go in them do them done uh, then when you do the normal nephilim rifts you get a keystone those keystones you can do greater rift keystones which are then actually timed and uh, when these are timed uh, you have a specific time to complete them if you complete them your key gets upgraded to a higher level and you can try a harder uh, rift that will then have at the end potentially better rewards and um, will be obviously more difficult uh, why is this a thing because it ends up being sort of a competitive thing uh, you can go on the leader leaderboards and compete for the highest places on the leaderboards and um, you know that's uh, that's how some people choose to play the game so right now I'm about to end the Nephilim Rift that I was doing to get a key to show you guys. I just wanted to let you guys see how it works in terms of uh, you know loot. You have a lot of loot coming left, right and center. Every time you kill something it drops gold, items, whatever. But uh, it is a quite frequent thing to have loot. Uh, as you can see they're all dropping gold, they're all dropping uh, crystals, this is crafting equipment. So you have a lot of loot coming in all the time. The thing is just because you get loot does not mean that it is amazing loot for example um i have gotten about three legendaries during the course of this little easy rift that i was doing and uh, what happens is you will identify them and when you identify them you'll have their specific stats like for example this one is crit chance uh, vitality intelligence etc etc now every time you identify an item it will have a chance to have something different. It will also have a chance to be upgraded, like Ancient Legendary, Primal Ancient Legendary, that will be even better, or have sockets, or, you know, you get where I'm going. It is an endless loot treadmill, where just because you have a good item, there is always a chance that the better version of that item will be dropping for you. Maybe the next one that you'll drop for me will have three... 50, uh, sorry, 750 intelligence instead of the 378 that I have now. Maybe it'll have that, but then another stat will be bad. So the, the game basically showers you with loot with the knowledge that uh, it is not necessarily the best version of that loot and you'll, that you will want to get better in any case. When you get to town, you can disenchant the items uh, into crafting materials, you can craft specific legendaries as well, and um, that will also be random and will also have a chance to be upgraded. So, you know, it's an endless loot treadmill. Also, I forgot to mention when I was mentioning the character customization, you can also customize your skills a lot by choosing runes on it. What these do is that they will completely change the way what each skill does. For example, Gargantuan summons a giant zombie to fight for me. I can make it cleave. Uh, with this uh, thingy. I can make it uh, be stronger when surrounded or when encountering elites. This is a more powerful than Gargantuan that in place of being permanent is uh, for 15 seconds. Uh, this one is constantly doing AoE damage as poison. This one slams every once in a while. And you will also see that there is cold, physical, fire, poison elements on it. And that also plays into the elemental kind of thing that you can boost a specific damage type to do more damage uh, than other damage types, to basically multiply it. So that's an also another uh, layer of customization. Same for the passive skills that you can do. There is a lot of different passive skills. For example, this one, damage from zombie. That's a pretty strange fire one. But this one, for example, is a bit more tricky. It increases damage, but also increases mana costs. Same as this one. Um, uh, actually, no, let me see a more, you know, a more uh, complicated one. Well, most of them are pretty straightforward. They boost this or boost that. But uh, all of them can synergize together to create a custom good build that works for you and works for the skill. I'll now start a uh, timed rift and uh, I will actually let you guys see the playthrough completely to see how it plays. Although, keep in mind, it will be a it will be a breeze because I'm several levels of difficulty lower than I should be doing this game. But I just want to let you guys see the playthrough, what it's all about, some of the mechanics. And uh, I will be doing a small commentary of the game's history and how it has evolved throughout the years. Um, Diablo has launched uh, five, six years ago, perhaps. And um, it was not amazing and received at the time. There were several issues with the game, um, with the loot system, 
between well, one of the things was the loot system, but there was actually a lot of problems with it. The issue with the loot system is loot was very very scarce, and what makes the game interesting to begin with is the fact that you can customize your build, um, build it like you want it. Uh, like I said, the legendaries and set items do have a major major role in that, and uh, they were just very 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 low drop chance, and by that I mean you could play for days and days and not see one single legendary and even hairs were difficult to, to get even the items that had no you know specific affixes were quite difficult to get sometimes so yeah and to exacerbate that problem the game launched with a real money auction house that meant you can actually buy items with real money um what ended up happening is people would sell their items for crazy amounts of money. I believe the highest that you could sell stuff for was about $250 or something. Uh, and act items were actually selling it for that much because it was a very anticipated game. And uh, yeah, people were crazy about it when it first launched. It had flaws, yes, but it was so anticipated that uh, a lot of people overlooked that and uh, just went with it. I myself made enough money with the real money auction house to be able to buy the uh, latest Warcraft expansion completely for free, as well as some other uh, digital upgrades to my Blizzard games. But you could actually turn that in for actual real cold hard money if you wanted to via PayPal. So you can see how that was a bit of an issue. Thankfully, the auction house was shortly moved very soon after, and uh, it actually became quite a good game when the expansion launched. It became a very high quality game, if you ask me. A lot of issues were fixed, uh, a lot of problems were solved. The loot is more nor now nor normalized. As you can see, I got a lot of legendaries in that previous run, three or four. Um, and um, yeah, now it is more what it should have been from the start. Uh, also, uh, while I'm doing this rift, small update on the greater rifts, you do not get any loot as you play the rift. You only get the loot at the end when you finally complete it. And uh, yeah, it will be all in one go at the boss. As you can see, I have a little bar here on the side with a timer and the progress. I'm breezing through it because it is a very, very easy difficulty. And I don't want to have to concentrate on the game itself right now. I just want to talk to you guys. Uh, and you know, the game, I'm just going on autopilot around here. Uh, as you can see, those yellow enemies are special enemies that have special abilities. That one had thorns around it that damaged me whenever I hit it. And uh, it also had electricity that it spawned. There's a lot of other things like leaving a trail of fire, uh, exploding when they die, um, periodically freezing you, knocking people around, or, or when they get hit you, they knock you around. Uh, freezing areas that you have to get out of so you know that is a very big concern when you actually uh, are playing all, all like this one uh, that that one does a ton of damage if i wasn't on a lower difficulty in any case um there are several fixes on the monsters they can be they are completely random uh, obviously the monsters are tougher when they have those but also give more xp and uh, better loot uh, the normal monsters are usually not much of an issue other than some that have some annoying mechanics to them. In any case, it's a game where you just kill, kill, kill very quickly, and um, they just keep coming at you when you keep killing, and uh, so on and so forth. In any case, um, the game did become quite good after the Necromancer patch as well, uh, another new class, a few new updates. Um, by then, the bounty system was already in place, uh, but and was improved and the crafting system was also improved at that point so there were a number of optimizations in the game that actually made it quite fun like new sets new items uh, all of that together made for a very very great experience and to this day i still enjoy playing diablo now here is the catch though and i will stop for a second because i was about to summon the boss and i wanted to talk for a little bit before i actually summon it um the problem with Diablo right now is the lack of new content. There has not been expansions or uh, DLCs or anything in a couple of years now. The game is pretty stale. There's always new seasons, but even the rewards for the seasons are often recycled. And it's like, uh, here, have, uh, uh, have a, a new pet or what 
or some new portrait frame for your portrait here or a new flag for to carry on your back but that's about it and that's not really super exciting and um, other than the leaderboards and competing for the leaderboards i don't see why you would play this game for an extended period of time because i mean i get it um, that it's a very the type of game itself does not lend itself to big overhauling and updates but there could be a few more classes added even if not very often there could be no new sets new legendaries and you don't even see that either um even new rewards even like transmogrification sets which are the name for you know how your character looks to change how your character looks even the transmogrification sets that are rewarded each season they've been the same since the start so um it does feel like the owl has been kind of abandoned by uh, Blizzard, and they're just letting it roll. And uh, they've made some of their money with it. I'm sure they had a profit, but they're not really looking to get more money out of it, and not really investing in it either. So um, yeah, it seems like it's a game that's just kind of abandoned and waiting for the owl four, and that's when they will get new stuff, and that's about it. It's not great, but uh, it is what it is, and um, for most people. If you uh, bought this game, uh, you probably got enough playtime out of it to justify having spent that money. So, uh, yeah, it's not great, but can't really complain either, I guess. It's, it would turn out to be a good game in the end. As you can see, uh, I'm allowed to summon the Guardian now. I will... There we go. A new evil walks the earth. I picked up... A po yeah, these Guardians are usually quite difficult if you are on appropriate difficulty, but I am not, so it's probably just going to drop that. Yeah, there you go. So as you can see, a ton of loot, legendary gem, a set item, which is the green ones. I will not even pick up most of this stuff, because uh, whatever. And uh, then I go here and I can actually upgrade some of my legendary gems, which on my character are uh, already so high that this low difficulty will not improve them anymore. So I'm improving one of the you know lower gems that I have, just because I can. The upgrade chance goes lower if I try another, and I will just go back to town. So yeah, this is uh, this was a greater rift. My key got um, actually no. I am actually giving you bad information. The keys do not get upgraded anymore. You just need a key to enter. That was the old system back when I still played regularly. Now what it matters is you just un if you succeed in your rift you unlock a higher one and you always need one key to go in. So I apologize I've been giving you wrong information but I'll put a little note on the video. Um, yeah it's confusing when you haven't played the game for a long time. Anyway I'll just show you how to identify an item. You right click on it, it identifies itself. Um, and uh, yeah, there you go, Arakir's Carapace, for another set for the Witch Doctor. You can identify them all at once using the Book of Cain around here, as you can see. And you have a nice little chest to store your stuff, which I have plenty of stuff in there. So this is the basics of Diablo 3. Um, what else is there to say? Uh, it is a very enjoyable game when you st first start playing it. And I've played it for some months actually, so I did get my money out, uh, value out of it. But yeah, for the long term, it's not something that you will be playing for years. Most unless you really love the genre. Because it does get stale after a while, I have to admit. So my gen genuine opinion and my review of this is it is worth the money. But uh, it is a lot more fun if you have people to play with, obviously. But uh, it's not a game that you'll probably be playing for years to come. It's more played for a few months with your friends and then uh, log back in once in a while. Uh, because it's always fun to come back after a while and uh, have the, all the enemies exploding around you and leveling a new character and gearing it. But then it gets stale again. So it's kind of a cyclical thing, if you know what I mean. I do advise you guys to try it out. Uh, you can buy it at, from Blizzard at Battle.net store or on their website. I'm not sure what the price is right now, but I believe it's probably around the 30 or $40 mark, I'm guessing. And uh, yeah, this has been Attic PC Guy. Enjoy your adventures in Diablo if you will try it, and I will see you next time.